I'm pretty sure that first I'm going to put a Cochonk in my Discord. And then I'm pretty sure they have like a whole thing about what they're doing with this uh, here. Overdrawing. Uh, no, that's, that's, I thought that was about mana. All this stuff. This is all. It's all technical stuff. Look, man, look at all this. Damn. Posted March 4th. Skill showcase. There's so much here. Skill design. I, I think there's a thing here about the trading. I did not. I was not aware there was this much. Great. Here we go. Okay. We've heard you and we have some exciting news to share with you today. You may recall back in December, we released our pains for item gifting in last Epic. Since that time, we've been engaged in an ongoing conversation with the community about trade. Many players expressed they were excited by our decision to champion finding loot and many others have voiced their disappointment, letting us know that they were sincerely looking forward to trading their treasures in a Terra. We made it clear in the past that we want last Epoch to be a place where you can come slay monsters and find great gear upgrades and it still will be. However, it is equally important to us that we remain a studio that listens and is grounded in our community. In short, we want Last Epoch to be the ARPG that rewards you for hunting items the way you most enjoy, no matter what side of the trade conversation you're on. So we've been hard at work discussing, debating, and consulting with some of our trusted community members, and we're happy to present you with the following. Item Factions. We are pleased to introduce you an early peek at the featured design of our new item faction system in Last Epoch. Inside you'll find two powerful factions, the Merchant Guild and the Circle of Fortune, ready to accept you and reward your allegiance. So in the Merchant's Guild, you can buy or sell any type of equipment and train directly or asynchronously, uh, asynchronously using the bazaar. Or in the circle of fortune, improves quantity and quality of item drops and use prophecies to hunt for specific item types. So is this basically like trade and SSF, except they're making SSF more interesting? Okay. Huh. Along your travels in the last epoch, you'll encounter factions and a terrorist denizens that we may choose to align yourself with. Aligning with a faction will allow you to gain both reputation and improve your rank within the faction, and favor to spend on that faction's services and rewards. Climbing ranks within a faction will unlock their unique perks, services, and rewards. The Merchant Guild and Circle of Fortune are the first two, the first two factions that we'll introduce in the last epoch. And your choice of allegiance will determine the way your character obtains and exchanges items in the end game. Each character can only represent and gain faction with one of these factions at a time. Enabling exclusive benefits. Characters may swap between factions at any time. Whoa. Equipping items while found in the Circle of Fortune will require ranks in that faction, and equipping items purchased through trade while in the Merchant Guild will require ranks in that faction. So switching between them is more akin to respecting your character rather than something you'll want to do you routinely. So you can't, for instance... You can't play this mode, go into this mode, buy a bunch of items, and then go into this mode because the items you buy in this, you'll need ranks to use. And when you switch to this, you'll lose those ranks and can't use the items. Interesting. That's interesting. I, that's, that's definitely a way to deal with that. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's a good way, but that is, that is absolutely a way to deal with that. You can have different characters in the same cycle in different factions. Faction reputation is shared account-wide. Faction reputation resets each cycle. Cycle is their term for uh, seasons. When a cycle ends and characters are transferred to the permanent non-cycle environment, their faction progress will be carried over. Lowers a few rewards uh, you can expect when aligned with the... Okay. Rank 2, 45% of runes of ascendance to be preserved when used on an item. Oh. Fixes are 50% more likely to be exalted. Uniques are twice as likely to have legendary potential. So this is like much more of a... This gives you a lot more ability to craft the items that you want. For this one, you may trade set items. You may trade unique items with no legendary potential and set items cost less. And you may trade exalted weapons. and So this is like, yeah, full trade faction. 
But that's weird. So what you can trade unlocks as you level it up. Huh. Okay. Gifting an item? You have to use something on in-game to do so? be introducing a new item type called resonance that drops when you've played alongside a player for a very extended period of time using a resonance on an item will enable it to be gifted to that player not any player that player even if they were not present when the item dropped oh wow <laughs> okay that's interesting huh all right well these are these are interesting things they're doing this is um they're trying to they're trying to figure out different ways to solve common problems in games like this. So I'm I'm interested to see how these are going to work. You can't you can't really feel out how they're going to work until they're actually in and being used. Ooh, I think that's our first unique range. Yeah, this will be cool to see how this all 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 this works out. Oh, seriously? I swear I have gotten more freaking necro items since I stopped playing my necro. Game is taunting me. I'm saving them all though, so if I go back to my, my necromancer, he's gonna be set. I feel like echo skills should happen like a quarter of a second after, not a full second. I'm noticing like 90% of my echoed skills never hit. And I mean that's it's fine against bosses, but I'd love to see that have more effect in the open world. Mana is still an issue? A little bit. I can get around, like, if I if I want to get around the mana issue, I can just do this longer. Watch my mana. And then I can, you know, kind of unleash hell. But I do want to find out ways to get my mana up quicker. That is something I'm still working on. I also really hope they fix my... Uh, my charge up movement skill today. I heard there might be a hot fix today. And I hope that's part of it. Hey, Super SP. What's the best idol you found so far? Um. So this one, hold on. Oh, movement speed shard, hell yeah. Let me see. I really like this one so far. This is great for me. 53% increased uh, void damage. And then I have another one that's a, like a square, but I can't actually use it yet without uh, dropping this one, which I don't want to do. Sorry, I'm trying to read this weapon. Please give me a second. Uh, not bad. Awesome. But yeah, I haven't found any that are that are wildly awesome yet. <laughs> How's the trade economy in this game? Someone goes non-existent. Not wrong. Hey, MNP, good morning. Also, dude, the echo that does the spin should totally follow you around. Like, just stick on top of your character. Again, good for bosses, but kind of useless in the field. Hey, Curly, good morning. Hey, Progenitor, how are you? Mm -hmm. 
What was the shop name where you can buy this game to support Co? Uh, that is co.tv slash game store. Um, there's also the Nexus button in my profile. Yep. Oh, actually, you know what? Hmm. Here we go. Cool. Hey, Vera Johnson. Wolson is coming to console. Should I buy it? Um, when I played Wolson, the the keyword with Wolson was okay. Wolson was okay. Um, I I I did play it all the way through, but when I played it, there were some major server issues and bugs, which I've I've heard they've overcome. Um, so it, I feel the same way about Wolson in terms of ARPGs, as I feel about a game called Stranded Deep for survival games. And what I mean by that is, it's a fun game to play if you like that genre, but you're probably better off doing the other major ones first. Like if, you, if you've played Grim Dawn, if you've played PoE Into the Ground, if you're done with Diablo, if you've played Last Epoch, and you're still wanting a little bit more or something a little bit different, like, uh, you, you know, like Van Helsing, I put in that category too. Um, you know, then it can be something cool to check out. But I wouldn't really recommend Wolson over any of the other offerings right now. It's still cool, but it's just, you know, I feel like other, other games tend to do it a little bit better. But I do need to, again, end this by reminding folks, I only played it on release. I have heard that it's, it's you know, I'm a long way since then. Um... So, I, and I'm not sure I haven't played again since then. So, it, it may have gotten a lot better. Toxic Jade Amulet of Hope. Not bad, but not what we need. Will I be playing Diablo 4? Yes. When do I get to play it? Uh, probably same as everyone else. Oh, God. Whoa, what was that? Are those explodey spiders? Hurt. Hmm. Winter and shatters on death. Oh, okay. That's not good. And if you use golden chalice. Yeah, if they do um, any early accessing for Diablo, I'll let you guys know. But haven't I mean it's still it's still pretty far out. We've got a few months. So. Not uncommon they don't talk about that, that stuff in some cases hours before the game actually comes out. Hmm. I do want to try a bow build in this game at some point. I'm kind of wondering how that would be. I do love bow users and ARPGs, especially ones that have some kind of mobility. Aspect of Lynx, that's a druid thing, right? I think so. Still no decent gloves. Ouch. Classic spin to win class? Yeah, this one is. I'm getting, I'm doing a little bit more with the uh, the void stuff. But right now it's pretty spin to win. It works great, I mean, it's, it's fun. Hi, I'm not sure what you're asking. Button says you come back to P99. I'll actually probably do the new progression servers in May on live, but I tried P99 a little bit and eh, wasn't really feeling it. The big thing I like about MMOs is is kind of when everything is fresh and everyone's excited and the populations are full and stuff, and I feel like that's kind of the opposite of P99. If they open up a new server, I might check it out. But, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, before early access beta in March? Yep. Yeah, this Friday. We'll definitely be playing that. Hmm, that's, that's not a bad one. 
Let's see here. Uh, let's replace that. More health regen. Sure, I like that. Hey, Deb Step, what's up? Stand down or die. Whoops. Hand an echo for good measure. Introspective ornate solar idol of the posting. Oh, 20% mana efficiency with void spells. Interesting. Okay. Uh, Abrash, America has already undergone the time shift. Yeah. The time shift. Nice, Vexus. Enjoy your time off, dude. Uh, somebody said the waypoints in this chapter are wonky. Are they? And I haven't seen these levels for a long time. Oh, there's a there's something right there. Great. Almost a 50. Uh, let's go ahead and grab you. Wasn't I doing a Necromancer? I was, and then I switched over to this, and I've been really enjoying it. Gods. Julia sent me. Well, this is awkward. Hmm. I will go west then. Yeah, no. Retrieve the blessed horn. Human horn? Hmm. I am Christopher G. How you doing, bud? Did I play the Vinny Original Sin 2? Yeah, a couple times. And I'm anxiously, anxiously awaiting Baldur's Gate 3. Mm-hmm. That five gold. Man, that's a lot of chunk on Discord. Woo! Hey, buddy. Hello. I'm waiting until nightfall, then sneaking through. Okay. Find the feeding pens in the fortress. Sounds fun. Let's do it. Oh, thank you. Mm -mm -mm. Just bought a house, Christopher G. Gonna have to put a lot of work into it, but thankful to have a home. Hell yeah, dude, congrats. We've been working on our house for the last year, and we still got another half year at least to go. I feel you. Good luck, man. It's cool. Co might be the only LE player that's read all the quest text. Well, I haven't read all of it, but I am kind of enjoying the, um, the story elements. This game seems to have gone to great lengths to try to make a, an engaging story. At least it feels that way a little bit. What is this? Wait. Where does this go? This is Holheim Pass. I I'm not supposed to go there, right? Mm, hold on.
Mm. Sorry, I had to show my love for Bojangles. Cogger sad thing is wow, Drifter Sun, Shady Fridge, Omega Wex, thank you all three for the subs. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys. Hmm. Oh so dope. Could not agree more. Bojangles is the business. Hey, it's Chili. How you doing? Have I tried the RE4 demo? No, I think maybe we'll do that this afternoon. We'll see. I do kind of want to try it. I was going to skip it, but I kind of want to see how it is before we play it, before we dive in. We'll see. It's on PC, right? Oh yeah, the demo's not very long, which is one of the reasons I might check it out. Yeah, if the demo was like an hour or two, I'd probably skip it completely, but the, I've heard it's so short that it basically just lets you take a look at the game and, you know, see how the combat feels and stuff, so. That's much more my speed. Not really gonna spoil much with that. And Ali says, I'd say it's about a half hour if you're taking your time. Okay. Yeah, we could do that and then maybe play some Phantom Brigade afterward. That could be cute. Yeah. Magic says, no, you're cute. No, oh, you're cute. Die, you. I don't think you're going to win this battle. Because you ain't. Hey, Anna Clara, how you doing today? Oh, here we go. Okay, my big skills are leveling. Um, So I really want... This is going to be so big. This is going to, like, double our damage. Um, I need to get Obliterator. I need two more points in this skill tree. And we can get Obliterator. God, I wish I could multicast this spell. I'm, I'm praying. Okay, here we go. We're going to get this. I'm going to get this. I'm going to test it. All right, here we go. Two, three, four, five. Okay, somebody said you definitely stopped and cast the spell. I don't think we stop and cast the spell at all. Yeah, I think that's just fine. I think that's great. So what we just got is, if you notice, every so often there's that purple that goes out. And um, what that purple thing is, is that's actually a different skill. It's casting this skill. So since I'm not really using Anomaly, what I think I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna spec Abyssal Echoes as my 50. And this this casts Abyssal Echoes, this casts Abyssal, Abyssal Echoes. Can we make this one cast it too? But it's a, it's a super, super nice... Uh, also, we got to get this, since we're going to be guaranteeing good on this. Oh, I can actually save a point by dropping this. Let's do that, because we're going to be our we're going to be guaranteeing the crit. Well, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do. That. Okay, cool. I'm going to finish my coffee. Check void supremacy in the abyssal echoes tree. I haven't even looked at abyssal echoes yet. Time compression. I don't really need that. After casting Abyssal Echoes, your next Erasing Strike or Void Cleave deals more damage. Oh. Two slowed enemies. Okay. 
Abyssal Echo's initial burst slows enemies. Okay. So, if I'm thinking about this properly, whenever I use this skill, it casts it casts Abyssal Echoes. So when I when I jump in or when I'm next to an enemy and I cast it, that will cast Abyssal Echoes, which would then slow them and make it so my next erasing strike, which is what I cast after that every time, then does significantly more damage. And it looks like we can maybe jack that up to 80%. Nanny. Oh. Oh, dude. This is perfect. Abyssal Echoes now creates an Abyssal Rift at the target location that cast Abyssal Echoes for you three times before expiring. This means we would just drop puddles of hate all over the place. Because we cast Abyssal Echoes all the time with our skills. Puddles of hate. That sounds like a good metal band, doesn't it? Or an incontinent dog. Interesting. Um, I wonder if there's some way we can get... Is there any Abyssal Echo synergy here? I don't think so. I don't know about this Void Beam stuff. I'm a little, I'm a little hesitant on the Void Beams. Uh, yeah, I, I, this one looks like Abyssal Echoes, but it's not, not what we need. The beams melt everything, but they're static. Okay, so that seems like a boss killing ability. Yeah? That's not about right. Oh, nice. Uh, okay, so for you... I think we want to bring you down to... We were working to get you to here, I think. Yeah, that's where we're working to get you. So we need another point here. Okay. Great. So we're going to go here two times, here one time, and then here, which will give us no cooldown. And then the thinking here is that we can, if we have no cooldown, we can spam this ability like four times and then rewind time to get all of our mana back. And then if we jump in with this first, we can make the first one crit. We can even go back and forth if we want to and have it keep critting once the charge bug is crit. Me gusta mucho. Me gusta mucho. Sad Dingus is ugh, more thinking. Dude, I have to admit, the thing that I love about this game over Path of Exile is the synergies are so much easier to spot because of how much more guided the specialization trees are. And what's what's crazy is I I'd love doing this in Path of Exile, but Path of Exile is so horizontally huge that it that it becomes overwhelming. But in this game, because you're more restricted, it means that dum dums like me like can see this stuff a lot easier. So and I and I think that's awesome. I think that that really that really is uh, a huge benefit this game has. It's so much more approachable. And honestly, I think that that the next, I think one of the most meaningful things Poe could do is is find a, a way that doesn't piss off the long-term players, that makes the game more approachable for people that don't want to take a class in Path of Exile. I mean, there's a reason that Ziz literally has an entire set of videos that are called the Poe class. <laughs> so it's like, if if Poe could come up with a good system that could really have you intuitively be able to spot this stuff without having to do to, without having to input as much knowledge don't get me wrong some people can wrap their head around that and it's awesome and more power to you that's great but not all of us are that intuitive um i have been slain so it's it's uh it's definitely a thing it's definitely a thing Okay, so I can't stack these AoEs. I need to get out a little bit more here. I need to get out more, chat. I need to get out more. 
I do a lot of damage. I need to move around more is all I need to do. I can't just stand there spinning to win. Wow. That's 64 damage? And 121% increased cold damage? Yo, I need like a Void Axe. Is that a thing? Is a Void Axe a thing? Because I need a Void Axe. Holy shit. It's incredible for gold. Great. Oh, we got a new one here. Uh, here we're bringing this to... Uh, I'm thinking about getting this. I don't want to get this because I really love the mana restoration. Um, I'm not, I don't really use this as a damage skill, so I don't really need that. I don't really want a chance of dying when I use it. Yeah, so I think we're going to work down here. Okay. I think we're going to work down here. 